So today we're going to dive more in depth in talking about arrow nodes. I'm going to tell you how to build a better arrow that will be more accurate and more forgiving with the properly placed arrow nodes. So a while back I did a video specifically uh, talking about, it was within the tuning series, I don't remember the actual video, uh, but I showed you how to find the nodes of your arrow. I think it was just a random thing that I did for whatever reason and I've gotten a million questions specifically about where do you place the arrow node or how is that relevant to anything and uh, today we're going to cover that and I'm going to show you how to find your arrow node and where to put it on your arrow for the most forgiving setup possible. If you're new here, my name is Jay Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. I'm working to make this channel a really great resource to all types of archery from form to tuning, strength training, training plans, uh, you name it. I'm producing lots of content. So if you haven't by now, hit that subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified every time I do upload a new video, which is very often these days. And you don't want to miss out on any of the content I'm producing because ultimately I'm just trying to make you a better archer and eliminate all the growing pains that I had when I was growing up. You're watching the Jay Kaminsky YouTube channel. So before we get into talking about arrow nodes and where you should be placing them on your arrow, I do want to make a quick note and say that I've just had kind of an overwhelming amount of comments, questions, inquiries, and all sorts of stuff from comments on these videos, social media, you name it. Uh, it's just kind of become a little bit overwhelming. So what I've really been focusing on is the people that really help make this channel possible, which is the patrons at Patreon. Um, I have hooked up a Discord server for uh, this specific reason for the patrons and myself to kind of just discuss amongst ourselves, you know, form, tuning, training, you name it. Uh, there's uh, basically anything there available, and I really make sure that I answer the questions that are posted on there uh, because in order to have access to Discord, you need to become a patron. Uh, the lowest level for Patreon is $5 a month, so you'll have access to that, and I will answer your questions there for sure. It's just been really difficult to get to all the questions that have come up uh, from all these videos and, and everything going on lately. Um, so if you're interested in that, I will put a link in the description below and where you can find my patron, uh, Patreon page, and I'll put a link up at the top as well. So anybody that does check that out, I appreciate it, and that really helps make this channel possible. You know, I'm producing this free content for everyone to absorb, and I'm really just trying to help the archery community as a whole. So thank you to my patrons, and uh, thanks for listening to this as well. Okay, so we're going to talk about the arrow nodes. I already did a video specifically how to find them. Uh, we're going to briefly go over just the front node because that's really all that's relevant at this point uh, as far as what we're going to be discussing. So I'm going to show you how to do that first, and then we're going to talk about uh, benefits of node placement, how and where you should be placing it, and how you can adjust it. Okay, I'm gonna show you on my indoor arrows because it's much easier to show you the contact point that the arrows actually uh, have uh, because you can actually see them on aluminum arrows. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to find your node using this aluminum arrow, your carbon arrow is no different. All you basically do is grab a spot somewhere from the, you know, somewhere down here by the point, probably about two to three inches from the point, give or take, and you wanna pinch it like this pretty uh, tightly. You don't want to hold it like this because you won't be able to find the node. We're trying to pinpoint the node. So you hold it like this, and then what you do is you hit yourself in the leg or on something, and you let the arrow kind of hang like this. And then you hold on to it, uh, and you'll feel if it continues to vibrate or stops. If you're really close, it will continue vibrating. Like if I'm too far away like this and I hit my leg, it stops. There is no vibration. But the closer I get to the node, it's still vibrating and vibrating and vibrating. It just now stopped. No, still vibrating. Now it stopped. So anyway, I'm really close to the node. If I move a little bit further forward to that, it's still vibrating. Actually, that might be even closer because it's vibrating longer and a bit more aggressively. But eventually, you're going to find the actual node. I'm too far forward. So this is where my front node is. I'll do a high-speed video so you can see the arrow actually flexing, uh, and then you'll you'll get an idea of where the actual node is. So I'm going to mark that with a marker. I'm going to make a, a just a mark where my two fingers are. Now this isn't like super exact because your fingers are 
um, you know, touching quite a bit of the arrow. But here I've made a mark on the arrow showing my node. So now what are nodes and how do they affect the arrow itself? So as the arrow is flying down range, especially with us recurve shooters, when we let go of the arrow, the arrow is flexing because the string has to move around our fingers as we let go. So that induces a bend in the arrow left to right, but I'm going to illustrate it up and down for you. And essentially the arrow is doing this as it's flying down range. Now there are two points in the arrow that it does not actually move because these two points stay still as the arrow flexes up and down like this, right? So the video that I talk about this before, I'll put a link in the description, plus I'll put a card at the top now, just so you can see how to find the front and back node exactly and see the diagram I drew specifically to what the arrow nodes are. So essentially the nodes are just a spot on the arrow that does not move in space, no matter how much that arrow is flexing down, you know, as it's flying down range. Okay, so we found our arrow node. Now we gotta find our arrow contact points. I have um, some arrows here. These are used arrows that I have shot. Now these arrows I have shot with a biter plunger, um, not the AAE plunger that I helped design, but the biter plunger. And as I've discussed in the plunger video, um, the biter plunger is super hard and it wears your arrows. And uh, there is actually grooves that get worn into your arrows or the finish gets worn off if you're shooting aluminum arrows. Uh, this would have been much easier to show you on a Black X7, but this is what I've got. All the other Black X7s that I have, I've shot off the AAE plunger and I don't have a mark, so I can't really show you. As far as where these two marks are, or where the mark starts and where the mark ends. So essentially what I can see from this position is my mark starts here and my mark ends here. So these are the two spots or from, from this spot to this spot is where the arrow is actually touching the plunger. The rest of the time, the arrow, do the way that it flexes as it's going by the bow, it actually will start bending away from the bow and get clearance. So only this much of the arrow from here to here is what's actually touching the bow while the arrow is coming out of it, with the exception of the knock on the string, of course. So I'm going to mark those spots. Uh, where the beginning and end of that line is that I can see. And so those, there's my two spots. Ideally, your node should be in the center of those two points. I have heard a lot of theories of putting the node on the front. Do not do that. I can tell you why you should put the node in the center of this contact point. If you think of the node not moving at all, that means that the spots that are closest to the node on the arrow, meaning the spots on the arrow that are very similar or very close to where the node is, the arrow is moving very little as the arrow is flexing going uh, down range. If you are really far away from the nodes, like here, the arrow is moving a whole lot in this center section. So you would not want the arrow to be contacting this portion. You want it to be contacting near the node. Now, why is that? And and the answer is it's forgiveness, forgiveness, okay? What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is basically, if you make a mistake, how far away those arrows go away from the center of the target. Are they very close to it or very far away? So forgiveness essentially is how close the arrow will go to the 10 ring if you make a mistake versus not making a, a mistake. If it's more forgiving, you'll shoot a nine instead of a six. If it's less forgiving, you'll shoot a six instead of a nine. So I, hopefully you can follow that. But essentially why you wanna put the node in the center of that contact point is because if you make mistakes, any mistake at all that changes the way that arrow is flexing, to change the way the string comes out of your fingers, anything like that, it is changing the way the arrow is going to flex. And because the node does not move, that means that this spot will be static no matter the mistake you make at all. So that means if your node is here in the center of these contact points, this spot's not moving, and the arrow is moving equally this direction versus this direction all the time, no matter what. But if the node is here in the center, the arrow is moving right here on this spot very little compared to if the node was here, the spot back here is going to be moving twice as much because of the properties of how the arrow flexes. So if you put the node in the center of the contact point, you're mitigating how much the arrow is flexing while it's touching the bow. 
And so if it's in the center here, that means that it's the least amount of movement no matter the type of shot you make. So when you make a mistake, it won't deviate very much on the target. It will want to stay very similar to how you optimally shoot the arrow. But if it's way up here and you make a mistake, because the arrow is still touching back here and it's flexing different, your impact point is gonna be much more different. So I really hope that that makes sense. It's a pretty simple uh, thing to follow. It's a pretty simple concept to understand. So ideally, you want your node in the center of your contact point. Now, how do you change where the node is on your arrow? You can do that with a, a, a few different ways. Arrow length is definitely one of them because your plunger essentially will change position on this arrow um, and, and that it will be directly related to where the node is. Also, you can change it with point weight. Heavier point weights will shift the node further. Lighter point weights will shift the node back. Now, let's compare where my full build arrow is, where my node is with my point in it compared to where my contact points are. Now, if you look, this arrow is not quite the same length, so it's not exactly the right uh, comparison or direct comparison, but I'm just gonna put the shaft at the end just like this arrow is here. Um, the reason that this arrow is a little shorter is because I would use a pro point on the end of this, which is much longer than this regular uh, parabolic nib type point. But anyway, as you can see, my node is really far forward on this setup. Why is because this arrow is relatively stiff compared to what I should be shooting, and this point is a 200 grain point. So it moved my node really far forward, but I really needed to break down the spine to get the arrow to shoot better for me um, because I couldn't group without a properly tuned arrow. So I had to compromise, and this is what I ended up with. This is not ideal. Indoor, does not mean anything for me compared to outdoors does and did not mean anything for me when I was competing professionally for my sponsors. Everything revolved around the Olympics. The Olympics is outdoors, therefore outdoors is more and most important. So indoors, I was more or less just having fun. I didn't wanna to have to shoot a ton of weight. I didn't wanna to have to train a whole lot. I just kinda of wanted to take a little bit of a break, uh, refresh my, uh, you know, my, my determination for the next outdoor season and focus on that. But, my outdoor arrows, the node was in the dead center of my uh, contact point because I knew it would be more forgiving. Um, I would love to show you on my X10s, but I have since gotten rid of all of my old X10s that have a lot of wear on them, so it's very difficult to show you, and it's difficult to show you on camera anyway. Um, essentially, what you can do to find your contact points on carbon arrows is this. Now, this is a used arrow. It's a very old arrow. I think I built it for doing some experiments. Uh, but essentially, what you can do is you take your carbon arrow and you hold it like this, and then you spin the arrow and move your fingers forward to, towards the back. And you'll start to feel, especially if you shoot the biter plunger, not the AAE plunger, but definitely the biter plunger, you'll start to feel a groove that is actually worn into your arrow. Now, um, as I'm spinning this, I can feel my contact point starting here because that's where the groove starts. It gets worse and worse and worse. Now it's getting smaller. That's it. So my contact points from here to here on this particular arrow, okay? So if it's from here to here, I would hope my node is somewhere in this area. And I'm actually very, very close to it. Now this arrow is built with a stainless point. Uh, I always competed with tungsten points. That is how you're supposed to be setting up your arrows for the most forgiveness possible using specifically the nodes. Also, I wanted to announce I'm going to be doing a YouTube live tomorrow on Sunday. I'm going to be uh, announcing actually something new that's very exciting for myself. So if you're interested in uh, partaking in the YouTube live and figuring out what I am announcing, uh, be sure to keep an eye out on my channel. Um, and some other places that I will be announcing my time of when I will be doing the Facebook Live on Sunday. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com, and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.